Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Witty Banter Book Club podcast. I'm Maddie here with Courtney. Hello, and today, in I don't want to say in concert with what we were doing last week, but in a similar vein, per se, uh, we will be reviewing This Blood That Binds Us by a one Miss S.L. Coakley. Coakley? I think that's how you say it. Um, by the way, cover art. Oh, so good. It's so yes. good. This is the first book in a four book series. Um, we'll decide if we're going to read the other ones um, on the podcast. But yeah. yeah, this week, it's me. Um, I'm the one who's giving out. And there's a couple of things we need to establish first. First of all, I'm wearing my Stefan Salvatore shirt today. It felt like it was on brand, on theme today for some vampire. Um, I watched all of Twilight this week. <laughs> and I made my boyfriend also watch all of Twilight with me this week. Um, so I, I'm, in, I'm in a vampire-y mood. And I'm a vampire fan. Okay? So keep that in mind throughout this review. Also, my background today says Andy Dwyer core, because I think that is how, what best would sum up the main male character in this book. So I would agree. Let's talk about this blood that binds us. So this, first of all, it's not really a romance book. And it's not really a, it's not the vampire story you think it's going to be. Um, in a similar vein to la- vein, uh, to last week, <laughs> um, they it, the vampires in this story have been modernized. Okay, they are they are different than the ones that we are kind of used to seeing. They still are like you know bloodsuckers and stuff, but inside of them lives this Basculus from Harry Potter esque creature that whispers. Like that's what that's what I'm hearing in my head during those parts of the book. I just imagine so like story. venom. I mean, that's probably a, a more accurate representation, but the basilisk <laughs> is what I was seeing in my head. <laughs> I think it is um, because it's like italicized and bold whenever it talks. Yeah. <laughs> just like the basilisk. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so our main character, her name is Kimberly, and this is just a side note. One thing I do not super enjoy about this book is that everybody's names is their full legal names. They don't go by nicknames in this book. And I don't know why, but the name Kimberly bothers me. It's just one of those names where I'm like, Ugh, why? I'm sorry if your name's Kimberly. That's just my personal like one of opinion. those dog whistle names that indicates something <laughs> sinister to me. Right. Um, like Kim. Fine. Kim Kardashian? Fine. But when they call her Kimberly, I'm like, ugh. Kim Possible? Fine. Kimberly yeah. Possible? Absolutely not. Um, and then there's another character named William, and he just goes by William. That's a red flag. Yeah. That's a red flag. Will or Bill, that's all we take here. Yeah. yeah. Or Liam. Yeah. Unless you're the Prince of England. That's yes. the only reasonable excuse. Or, or, and his name isn't even William. Willem Dafoe. <laughs> yep <laughs> okay so let's okay anyway back to the story so the story starts out with Aaron who's the main male character in the story um he's going for a little a hunt if you will actually that's not if you will he does he's going for a hunt yeah <laughs> um he he has recently turned into a vampire within the last two months so he's brand new to this and he is still trying to understand what's happening to him and he's describing what's happening to him as being like a venom-esque creature inside of him, telling him to do something that he's like actively trying to not do, but he can't control himself. And he's in the woods trying to stay away from human civilians. And he comes across this girl and he's like, oh man, I wish that she was not out here. I wish literally nobody was here right now. And he can't help himself and he attacks her. And he bites into her and he gets himself to stop and um, he dials 911 on her phone and then he like bounces. He's like out of there. But luckily for this girl, there were some nearby nosy neighbor campers who were walking by and saw that she had been attacked. So um, she was able to get help and she is at the hospital. Now that girl is our main female main character, Kimberly. 
and Yuck. Lily. Um, and Kimberly is uh, just it sounds horrible on my on my tongue. She <laughs> is she's an orphan. Um, she grew up in foster care, and she is convinced that a vampire attacked her, and she can't say anything because she's like. People are going to think that I'm crazy if I did this. She's also poor, so she can't stay in the hospital. Like, the doctor's like, stay in the hospital, stay in the hospital. He's not doing that. He's, like, he's doing it seriously because he's a doctor. He's not, like, flirting with her. (laughs) But the doctor's telling her to stay in the hospital. She's like, I can't. I'm poor. I can't. I can't. And so he, like, lets her leave. And she leaves. And she goes back. And she tries to return to her normal life. And she is walking on campus. And who does she see? The vampire that bit her. And she's like, I know, I know that he's a vampire. I'm going to start following him around. So she starts following him around and eventually they run into each other and he sees her and he's like, oh my gosh, that's the girl I attacked in the woods. Oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing for me. Like, she's going to see me and be like, he's a crazy guy who bit me in the woods. (laughs) So they eventually meet up and he's like, there's no Twilight, I know what you are moment. It's, hey... I'm really sorry I bit you. Um, I know this is, like, really super awkward. And she's like, you're a vampire. And he goes, yeah, I am. Um, Please don't tell anyone. Yeah, don't tell anybody, please. Like, it would be really bad for me and my brothers, because I got three brothers. And um, I think it would be really bad if that got out, because, like, we're trying to escape this evil, giant vampire family. And she's like, okay. Um, I'm just gonna keep living my life then. And he's like, okay, but I'm gonna be part of it now. Cause I'm gonna try to make up to you for all the bad things I did by biting you in the neck in the forest that one time. And she's like, okay, cool, I guess. Um, so then she meets this guy named William. Full legal names, can't stand it. Um, and he is kind of like flirting and like into her and stuff like that. And he invites her to a party and she goes to a party and guess whose party it is. That's right. Vampire boy, Aaron's house um, with his brothers. He's in a frat. Mm, That's a bigger red flag than him being a vampire, to be honest. And they, you know, she's like talking to Aaron. William's getting a little jelly bean. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of the spoiler parts. (laughs) She, the story is... Like I said, it is not a romance book. There's definitely, like, chemistry going on between Aaron and Kimberly. But they don't kiss in this book. Like, there is not a single romantic interaction in this book. Aside from, um, like, butterflies and stuff that they yeah. both describe. I would, yeah. I would equate this to the first book of Ninth House. Like, in terms of... There might even be, like, a little less... I think it's less. I don't know. I I would say they're pretty on par, but like that level of like romance, right? It's very clearly going to be a part of the plot at some point, but it's not like, it's not a romance novel. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, that is, that's pretty much what what happens from the non-spoiler parts. There's some twists, some not so surprising turns, and yeah. Um, okay, so if you've never watched the show before, we're going to do our pillars, and we're going to talk about if we recommend these books to people, and there's going to be no spoilers, so don't worry if you haven't read a book. Read the book, not a book. If you read a book, you can watch, but if you haven't read <laughs> the book, book really. you can watch it too. Um, and then once we get into the spoiler section, we'll talk about spoilers, and we'll give you a heads up. So, all right, first we're going to start with, would you recommend this book to uh, your underage sisters? Courtney, go ahead. Um, as is, I would say... Yeah, I think so. I think it was all right. Nothing I think, uh, setting off whistles in my head. I mean, it might like straddle the line. and so- I don't even think it straddles the line. No, 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 not even at a single part. Like I there's like they have chemistry, but there's no romantic interactions. There's no like romantic thoughts other than just like <laughs> he's kind of cute. Oh, she's kind of cute. Like it's very it's very PG. Yeah, it was very... I don't want to say it it wasn't like immature it felt a lot more like a story that would be set in like a high school setting just because of the way they all acted um yeah yeah uh i think there's a certain charm to that 
if you know what it is going into it. I don't know how the other three books are, obviously, but I'm going to guess that, like, it doesn't... I'm, I'm going to guess that this is YA, even I though it's not so. marketed as YA. So, like, I don't... Like, the fact that it's not being marketed as YA makes me think that maybe, like, later on down the line there's going to be some smuttery, but... Well, yeah, no... and they, they are all of age also so like, mm-hmm. you have to think tactically if it does feel somewhat like a high school book why are they aged the way that they are i can yeah. definitely see it like developing into that but they for real like don't even kiss in the first yeah book. and the closest they get it's like in the epilogue so yeah <laughs> don't go into it expecting all that yeah um so that yeah i would also recommend this to some as as it stands currently in time as the first book i'd recommend it to somebody under the age of 18 yeah. that might change if i find out about what happens in other books but as far as i can tell i'm pretty sure this is ya in the guise of it being new adult yeah um okay would you recommend this book to a fellow reader uh, yeah, I think so. It was a pretty quick read. I thought it was, like, fun. Part It's pretty predictable, but, like, I don't know if that's... Writing, and I've said this a billion times, it's very formulaic, and so, like, mm-hmm. sometimes it's hard to create a plot that is truly surprising. But I thought this one was executed well, and I liked all the characters. I thought it was pretty funny, so I would I would say so. Yeah, you know, if you're, like, really just into, like, hardcore smut right now, maybe it's not the right time. For that, mm-hmm. but we I'll tell you now, especially if you're like a newer reader who is like full throttle in the, the smut zone, you will go through phases where it's like, okay, I'm just kind of tired of reading this and you'll want to read something else. And this is a good mm-hmm. supplement for that, I think. Yeah, I hmm, I don't know if I'd recommend this to somebody. Maybe if they were looking for something kind of PG ish and like just short I would but I don't think I would recommend this book to somebody just being like hey you should read this book you know that's fair I think I I'll put this caveat into if someone was like hey what's like a fun vampire book to read I would this would probably make the list it's better than like Twilight (laughs) it is better than Twilight Mm -hmm. Which is not hard to be better than... uh, Yeah, a low threshold. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's not hard to be better than Twilight. um, Yeah, I like I liked it. I get where you're coming from, though. Like, especially... I don't know. It did have some... Again, it kind of, for me, minus the smut, falls into, like, the werewolf category of the stuff that I've read in the past. And so, like, I feel like that's a very niche area. Mm -hmm. But I do think, like, a teenage girl would enjoy this book. Yeah. You know? Probably somebody who's a little bit younger, too. Like, probably, like, I would say, like, this is why I'm so confused, because I'm pretty sure that this is being marketed as new adult and not young mm-hmm. adult. But, like, the age range for this, I think, would be perfectly fine at, like, 13 to 15 years old. Yeah, I think Claire would probably like it. Plus, there's, like, a underlying, not murder mystery, per se, but just, like, a mystery that's kind of, yeah. like, a compelling force. I think that's why I draw some of the associations to, like, Ninth House. Mm-hmm very like I don't want to compare the two they're pretty different but like just the way like the character's relationship develops reminds me a lot of that and then like the undertone of mystery yeah okay so we're gonna move on now to our four pillars so we're gonna rank our pillars out of five and then we'll give it a overall rating that has absolutely nothing to do with the pillars just the way that we felt about the book so the first pillar is going to be the witty banter Courtney what would your witty banter on a scale of one to five um, I think maybe like a four. I don't know. I I think like I thought Aaron was pretty funny. Uh, and like really the witty parts of the banter come from like his relationship with his brothers, not necessarily his relationship with Kimberly. But I do think that they have like a good rapport, especially like when they're getting to know each other and stuff. Um, I don't know. I thought the dialogue overall was pretty pretty good um and i just like the brother relationship that the author creates is really fun um it it almost reminds me i mean like just imagine if the vampire diaries was like doubled (laughs) (laughs) 
there's just sexy men everywhere that are all right. related. Um, but there's not, I, there's not really like a love triangle per se either. Mm-hmm. William sucks. I don't mm-hmm. think he's like funny at all. So I don't really get why she was all into his razzle dazzle. But I, I think like a three or a four. I don't know. Maybe a three. I'm going to go with a three, I think. It was good, but it uh, wasn't like revolutionary. Mm-hmm. I think I would give it. I think I would give it a four because there are a handful of times that like I actually laughed out loud at some of the things Aaron was saying. Like I was like, <laughs> he's just he is just goofy. He really is just Andy Dwyer. Yeah. Like there were so many parts of him where I was like, this is this is Andy. Like there's nobody else I see yeah. in my head. And then they like describe him as being like tall and lanky, and I'm like, nope. He's Andy. <laughs> yeah. He very golden retriever. He's blonde. Mm-hmm. Normally when I see that in a love interest, I'm immediately put off. But it's okay <laughs> if they're golden retrievers. Right. It fits right. the 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 diagram, the template, mm-hmm. if you will. Yeah, so I would give it I would give it a, a three or four. Okay. A four. Okay, what about the character development on a scale of one to five? Uh I think I'll also give that, like, a three. Um, I mean, obviously, they're, like, dealing with, I mentioned before, a mystery. Uh, And just, like, Aaron is a newly transitioned vampire, so he's struggling with lots of different parts of that. His brothers were involved with, like, the vampire mafia or something, and they're keeping a lot of secrets from him. And he's, like, an angry older teenage kid right because he's in college but like in his first couple years and so like kind of coming to terms with the fact that like his older brothers who he's always viewed as like parental figures aren't like the best people and that they're keeping secrets but it's to protect him like I think that is really his arc to a certain extent and just like living with the he struggles morally He's a lot like Edward, (laughs) where he struggles morally with, like, the fact that he has to feed on human beings. Um, And by the end of the book, he kind of just has to learn that, like, it's something that he needs to do in moderation in order for, like, the greater good. Um, Mm -hmm. And then I would say um, Kimberly's personal development is really just like finding a place to fit in she grew up in foster care reminded me a lot actually of like the last book like a similar character arc in a sense just kind of like a found family and a sense of loyalty to people who you would think are your like natural born enemies um I also liked, like, some of the relationships that unfolded between some of his brothers and Kimberly. Like, they treat her like a sister, in a sense, too. And I think that's just something she really needed. But I didn't think, again, I didn't think it was, like, revolutionary. And it served the plot well, but it wasn't, like, I don't know. A three just feels right to me. Her character development reminded me a little bit of Lauren from With Love from Cold World. Mm. Very similar backstories. Mm-hmm. Um, and like the need for found family and stuff like that from growing up in foster care. Yeah. I, the thing is, like, this is the first book in like a four book series that obviously this is only the first part of their arcs. So, like, I don't, I don't think that the character development was very good, but that's because it's the first book out of four. Yeah, that's fair. So, I'm going to give it. Mm, It feels unfair to give it a two because of, like, the fact that there's three other books. But this book by itself is, like, a two. Like, they're, like, they're slightly different than they were before. And, like, Aaron had better character development than Kimberly does. Kimberly just has, like, like friends now. Uh, And Aaron just, it's, like, coming to terms with being a vampire. But there's more to the story that we have not gotten to yet. So, a two. But it's, like, a... We'll see. Kind of, too. Yeah. I get you. Okay, let's do the... Let's do chemistry in lieu of smut, because it does not exist, and it'd be unfair to rate it on that. So what would you rate the chemistry in this book? Um, it's kind of tough in a sense. This isn't, like... 
I, I will say this every time we talk about this, or nearly every time, Enemies to Lovers is like always the best foundation for, I think, chemistry. And it just follows that like time old notion that like love and hatred are a fine line to walk. This is more of like a friends to lovers potential transition, right? Because we haven't really gotten to that point yet. I would say, like, they have a solid foundation of friendship. Like, uh, they spend the whole book building kind of, like, trust in each other. Um, Being people who both have to, like, keep a certain amount of distance or, like, secrets from each other just by the nature of their relationship. Um, But I also liked to, like... Throughout the book, as he does, like, really nice things for her and vice versa, it'll just be something where, like, the other character will be like, oh, that, like, gave me butterflies and stuff. It's not, like, this intense, huge attraction like we see in a lot of these novels where they're, like, fighting it off. It's just something that kind of, like, naturally grows as they learn to, like, trust and get to know each other. And I do think that there's, like, a certain chemistry in that. It's just a lot different than what I am normally drawn to. But I do think it, it was good for that. And I, it also just, I feel like this is would be better set in like a high school setting because it, it's almost like more of like a like a pure love to me, not like a, mm-hmm. you know, like a, an innocent love, despite the fact mm-hmm. that there's like an immortal person involved. He's still very young and like, I don't know, that transition from friendship into a romantic relationship just suits that better in my head. So I want to give it like, a three, I think. Yeah, I think a three is sufficient because you could definitely tell that there's going to be a romance between them in the future. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to tell, like, because you're just getting, like, the very starts of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, the butterflies are good. Yeah, I think a three is fine. Okay. Last category, the realism. What would you rate it on a scale of one to five? Um, so you gotta take it for what it is, right? It's a vampire book. <laughs> um, I thought parts of it were like semi-realistic. Parts of it were not, for obvious reasons. But I did think that the pacing was good. Um, and like I thought the resolution was okay. I think it's a good uh, setup for, like, the next couple books to come, right? Where, like, we're dealing with a very small, like, red herring villain sort of in this story that sets up the foundation for what's going to be, like, what I imagine is more of, like, a war-type scenario, even though it's set in, like, more modern times. Um, I will say, too, like, I guess the college campus feel was okay, uh, his brothers were kind of like gangsters and then they just go to being like frat boys. And I don't know about that transition, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, but I don't I, know. I think maybe like a three. It's it like it involves vampires. So part of it's going to but like, I don't know, parts of it were just like a little obnoxious and stuff like that. And uh, if, if, yeah. if three feels right to me. Their brothers also just seem, like, too nice to have been in a game. <laughs> They're like, we've killed people. But why don't we all laugh while I do this silly trick for everyone? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think it's super realistic. The college plotline was kind of abandoned. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're just in college, but, like, college itself is just, like, gone. Um, so, yeah, I would say probably a two. It's just, it's not realistic. It's not supposed to be, though. It's a silly, goofy vampire book. But yeah, the parts of the story that could have been realistic, I don't think were super realistic either. So they also like go camping at some point. Uh, they camping only- a lot in this book. What can only be described as a theme park. So that was weird. Yeah. Um... As somebody who grew up in Colorado, I'm not familiar with those kinds of places. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And then 
they did like cliff jumping too. I was like, all right, put down the Twilight series. We don't <laughs> need to reference everything. I know. There's even a reference to Twilight in there the is. book. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. Overall, what do you give this book on a scale of one to five? Um, probably like a high three. I don't think it's quite a four. It was like mildly entertaining. I think like I'll at some point, even if we don't read it on the podcast, like I'll finish off the series just because the first book was like pretty short too. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not that much of a hassle and like I'm somewhat invested in figuring out how the story ends, but uh, I think if it's three feels right, it's not a low three. It's not, I'm not mm-hmm. being like gracious with that. I think it, it's like a, a true three or maybe like a diet four. But <laughs> I think I think it's a true three. I there were parts of it that were really funny and like that I like felt entertained. But I think that this book could have used some more editing. I think that this yeah. book could have used a little less chunky dialogue. Um, and yeah, I will say this is the this author's first book like ever. And she's only I mean, like 20 four i think so she's super young too um hell yeah girl yeah so like it is not a like a like it's just like it's not bad like it's not a bad book and it's mm-hmm. if you're looking for something that is going to be entertaining and short go for it but it's definitely got its flaws and it's not the best storytelling i have heard but it doesn't like put me off from wanting to read her other yeah. books that she's yeah. published in the same on the same story so i agree yeah okay well we are going to move on to the spoilers now so if you have not read the book and you want to bye see you later come back after you finish reading the book um if you have read the book or you don't care feel free to stay have a little convo with us about it a little chat. um okay bye one, two, three, spoiler time. Um, I saw the plot coming from, like, the first time that she talks with William. I'm like, he's a vampire. Yeah, that guy <laughs> is bad news for sure. He just shows up yeah. in her class. He's like, hey, can I have your notes? Yeah. First of all, uh, let me tell you this, ladies in college. Men, if they don't take their own notes, they don't read yours. They're yeah, not- why would you give them that? One, yeah, those are vital, okay? Those are yours. Never trust a man mm-hmm. with your class notes. And second of all, it is 100% a guys to, like, infiltrate your uh, inner sanctum. And yeah. oftentimes used by equally evil men. So, um, I mean, I guess William isn't, like, really evil, but he's super annoying. Um, he is. I the- could not stand him. <laughs> The end part, too, where it's revealed that he's not actually a part of the Mafia. He's a part of the Legion, which is, like, a group of vampires who are against or, like, monitor... They're, like, the the bureaucrats of the vampire world, like, monitoring the family. But it just felt really, like... I don't know. Just so... It was just so weird. Like, they're also like part of they're like a religious cult basically yeah religion is so i'm like okay, yeah trade one evil for another buddy <laughs> yeah and it just there was like it mm, i did not like that i also felt like similar to in bride i felt like the vampire system here also felt like superheroes yeah i could agree with like, that uh, the Legion is like, I mean, they're called the Legion. Like, <laughs> that's so DC Comics of them. I, yeah. And then there's also apparently queens involved. There's six queens. And I'm like, okay, Akatar. Yeah. I think, like, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not saying you can't, like, marry different genres together, but this was just like a mafia book under the guise of vampires and like it'll clearly escalate to something else but i don't know i just didn't necessarily think that was necessary like i don't i and i also i'm like okay there's like a trial at the end for his brothers right 
And I'm like, this is the most half-assed trial I've ever seen in my life. He's like, tell me a story. Tell me your story. And I'll know the truth in your heart. And I'll decide whether or not you're guilty. Is that what you're going to do when you're a lawyer? When I'm a lawyer? No. <laughs> One, because I'll not litigate. And two, because I will not be a judge. <laughs> Um, um, never say never. Whenever you're a judge one day, you're going to be like... Here to play this clip. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's in your heart. I'll know if you're telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. Do that at sentencing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good way to get everything I do over to <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, it was just bad vibes. <laughs> your Honor, the stars told me that... Um, I needed to commit this crime. I can't be held ac- accountable for Mercury being in retrograde. Um, <laughs> it's just a full murder try. I'm like, hang on, I need to consult my crystals. You just you like go under your desk and you've like you've like taped them to from like the bottom <laughs> of the desk and they're just all there. My runes. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. It looks um, like a life sentence. Uh, and he literally yeah. just did like a minor robbery. <laughs> It's like they're like they're like, excuse me, judge, this is a this is a custody battle. <laughs> it's in, jail, in jail too, I am. <laughs> um But yeah, that was such a half baked trial, and then he's like, I find you guilty, but your brother's kindness makes me find you not guilty. Okay, uh whatever, I guess. I don't know. These literal thugs that you've caught. Who are yeah. just changing their entire family. And I guess, yeah. too, Aaron has some connection to the the Dark Queen. And mm-hmm. Luke is, like, in love with her, but he hates her. I don't know. They need to, like, fish out giving that Catherine a little bit more. They need to explain it to me a little more because it is kind of giving Catherine. But I just, like... I don't know. As predictable as this book was, I'm like, you need to give us some more backstory on the brothers here. Mm -hmm. And like, um, I don't know. William, what I didn't like about William is that he is created into this like sinister character. And then by the end, you just find out he's kind of like a dumb lackey. Yeah. Which is weird because he definitely was not giving that vibe beforehand. He was... It felt like an entirely different person. Yes. Yes, it did. And so, like, I don't know. I think that transition could have been done better if the author put more time into, like, him going from being, like, this sinister person to, like, making mistakes that show them Mm -hmm. that he's, like, not necessarily that high up on the totem pole. Still a threat. And he's also a vampire. And they're like, he has his, his reasons because the family did bad things to his family. And it's like, okay. Okay. All right. I just didn't really like him all that much as a character. And yeah, he's very predictable as like the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I think too, like... The brothers... I'm hoping their dynamic gets a little bit better explained in the next couple books, too, because, like, I can kind of pick up on it, and their relationship is fun, right? But, like, there's also certain points where, like, Zach and Luke are indiscernible to me. I don't remember which one is which or who likes what or who's which height. I know one of them's taller, the other one's shorter, has darker hair. But, like, in my head, I can't picture which one is which. And Mm -hmm. then... um. The author did everything but admit that Presley is gay. So, like, right? I'm like, just say it. Like, (laughs) yeah. Why are we dancing around this? I don't know. Yeah. But um, she's like, he invited a boy to the dance, and also he wears really loud colors all the time. (laughs) Are you? Is he gonna take him to a drag brunch too? Just say that he's gay. (laughs) I think he's bi because I think there was also discussion of like him like talking to girls. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was just for, like, distraction and show, or... Yeah. I don't know. You sorority girls, you need to get your gator up. <laughs> Wake up, girls, it's time to get your gator up. G- gator. <laughs> gator up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
The other thing I want to talk about is the character of Chelsea, who is just like a girl who really likes Aaron and like is telling people that they're dating when they're not. And she, in my head, I, do you know the, like the girls who like pretend that like, they're like the girl who secretly wants your boyfriend on, Inst- on TikTok that were popular, like, uh, like last year or something like that. Mm-hmm. The, the girl who was doing that is the girl I was picturing as Chelsea the entire time. Yeah. I, there's like one point where Chelsea corners Kimberly in the bathroom first of all it's supposed to be a safe space for us girl mistake number one um, yeah. and she's like what's going on with you and Erin tell me directly mm-hmm. and like then she gets mad because like it's very obvious Kimberly and Erin like each other or whatever but I'm like if, girl if you even have to ask you already know right um and so she was just like annoying to me in the sense that like She seems like a pretty girl, like an okay gal, and she just keeps throwing herself at this dude who, like, Mm -hmm. ignores the hell out of her. And granted, he does use her for part of the book to, like, get some distance between him and Kimberly, but that's, like, well into the story, and she should have been done with his shit long ago. And also, just because a man is, like, nice to you in a dire situation does not mean you need to, like, latch on to him. You know, like, you can like and respect that, and you can be very grateful for it, but they don't need to, like, be your savior, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because there's an instance where, like, her ex pushed her down the stairs, and she's like, Aaron's the only guy who's ever been nice to me. And it's like, that's where the bar is? He just has to be nice to you? Literally anyone who doesn't kick you down stairs? Yeah. (laughs) And then at the end, Kimberly and Aaron go to Chelsea's sorority house and they both bring her flowers. And she's like, bye, Aaron. Uh, And Kimberly's like, I want to be friends. And she's like, yeah, I guess. And I was like, what? (laughs) What? Weird. Yeah. Also, Kimberly has a friend named Chris, who was like her friend during her fostering, her, her foster background. Uh Uh, and he's just kind of dropped like (laughs) he's calling me declined who does not answer and then like barely talks about him after that and he's supposed to be like her only friend so she's like i'm not talking to him because he didn't believe me when i said a vampire attacked me like yeah nobody's gonna believe you at first Yeah, so she just declines all his calls for, like, the rest Mm -hmm. of the book. Which, honestly, so petty. Like, just tell him you're all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell him you're busy. He's probably worried about your head trauma that you have. Yeah, he's, like, calling psych wards. She's talking about vampires. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That is the logical progression of how that works. What do you think is going to happen next in the story? Like, what do you think the end, like, the, like, what do you think is, like, what will happen from here on out? I think, uh, these stories, it always tends to be, like, the human girl is not what she seems. Um, and so, like, she's going to be a vampire at some point, obviously. Uh, obviously. I think with the whole queen thing, maybe they'll be like, oh, she can be a good queen. Then they'll make her queen vampire, however the hell that works. And Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I'm sure her friend Chris will maybe get, like, kidnapped at some point. It'd be really sick if, like, one of the brothers died, but this seems like it's too much of, like, a a happy hunky-dory type story with little to no consequences. Mm Mm-hmm. Considering the vampires don't even, like, kill people Mm -hmm. unless they're in the mafia vampires. Like, I don't know. I'm interested to see how the dynamic between whichever twin isn't, like, in love with the queen but hates her, how that goes when she reappears. And um, I think Aaron will struggle with some sort of sense of loyalty to, like, the queen that he's sired to because we all know what that is. Um, Mm -hmm. and, like, his relationship with Kimberly, and I think it'll be something that she, like, struggles to understand, 
initially, maybe, uh, and that causes some tension. Uh, I don't know if there. I don't. I think at this point we're past like introducing another love interest because William was kind of that for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and like with the friend to like lovers dynamic, most of the time there's not like a third interjector once we've passed the threshold for that. Enemies to lovers, sure, right? Because there can always be another betrayal, but like. <laughs> Seems less so. I could also see, like, him doing something that, like, all of them view as a betrayal with, like, hidden motives that they then have mm-hmm. to parse out in the next book to show mm-hmm. that he's not really a, a bad guy. And we we know Aaron to his heart, to his core. He's right. like that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I really think there's only, like, two or three ways that the this story can resolve itself and I'm I'm 100% sure at the end of each of them that they both end up immortal together ruling something (laughs) yeah I think okay this is my predictions okay I think that Kimberly and Aaron are obviously going to be vampires together um, I think you're right about her becoming a queen I think that she'll definitely become a queen um I think that there will be a betrayal of the Legion whose alliances like that they have with them right now is not really a real alliance. Um, I think that Chelsea is going to end up like a Caroline character where like we really did not like her the first and then she grows on everybody and then by the end you love her just as much as more than you loved Elena. Um, (laughs) Speaking from experience... Um, and I think that she will probably end up with one of the brothers, probably the one whose girlfriend died. Um, I don't remember which one that was. I think that the evil queen girl is going to end up with the other brother. And I think Presley is going to end up with somebody, maybe Chris. I don't know, somebody else in this storyline. But I feel like all the characters that we're going to get have been introduced. Yeah, I would say so. At least, like, core characters. Um, Especially with, like, the Legion at the end. Those are the only, like, auxiliary... I could see us getting to know more about them, but I don't see, like, any more Mm -hmm. players being introduced. Yeah. Uh, So, that is my prediction. But I think it, I think you're right. I think it ends with I think it's going to end with obviously Kimberly and Aaron together. And I think that the words it's going to end on are going to be like Twilight, where it's like, but we have forever. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I do. <laughs> Did you just throw up in your mouth a little bit? You're like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yes. Uh, my gag reflex was working in full effect. Mm-hmm. E- we'll see. Mm-hmm. If you're still writing it, I don't. Is it still being written? Probably. I don't know if the fourth one the fourth one is the last one. I don't know if it's come out yet or if it's coming out soon. There's still a chance to save it. Just just omit that it's cheesy. Everyone does it. Yeah. Or just, yeah. just end the story by killing a beloved character and then stopping the series. Oh my god. That's <laughs> crazy talk. Full nuclear. Okay. That's all I have to say though. Yeah. <clears throat> I I concur. That wraps right. it up. So if you liked this episode, uh, oh wait, hold on. Next week, next week we'll be doing the Tessa Bailey book, the one about golf. Um, I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, I don't either. Some mm-hmm. golf girl, golf girl, fat putter. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um. No, that is definitely not what it's called, but that's a better title than whatever it's called. Um, We'll be reading that next week. We'll also be together next week in person, so keep a lookout for that. I also don't know when this is going to come out, but we are also going on the Wheel of Genre podcast to talk about a book on there. So we'll have that, well, you know, post about it on social media and stuff like that if you're interested in watching that. Um, we're doing that next week, so that'll be exciting. And yeah, um, if you liked this episode, give it a thumbs up. If you think that this book series is worth reading, 
um, you know, leave a comment letting us know about that if you think that like this is worth continuing the journey on. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. Pinterest. Um, by the way, we got one million views on one of our TikToks. So. Thanks to the uh, hard work of Miss Mackie J over there. She's in her twilight kitchen, cooking it up. I was in my twilight. People are so fucking mad at me. I have to throw <laughs> that out. But people are so mad at me um, because of the casting that I chose for my twilights. Um, guys, there's a couple of things we need to get out on the plate here. First of all, the original movie came out 16 years ago. Okay? Like, I'm sorry, but they are not retur- like the like they are not returning as Edward and Bella. It's just not possible. Mm. They're older now. It does not work. Um Yeah, and also, by the way, I have read the book. I read the book many, many years ago, and I read it again in 2022. And you know what? It's awful. Mm-hmm. And I think that with my casting choices, we could actually make a good movie. So uh, a little bit of rewriting as well. Yeah. I think is necessary. <clears throat> Specifically the Jacob arc, I think we need to get rid of that. Um and let's also while we're at it, let's just also change Renesme. Like let's just change that whole thing. Her name is Emily now. Okay. <sighs> it's something neutral. It's something normal. Just Renesme is else. gone. Just anything else. Um Yeah. Bella deserves jail for that. Anyway, um we all have that one friend. Some- Oh, you definitely have that one friend. <laughs> For a second, I was like, who named their kid something weird? Oh, I know who named their kid something weird. Yeah. If you ever think like, oh, this name is a perfect combination of two other names. That's where you stop. It's mm-hmm. where we stop and we reassess and we ask, why can't we just do one of the two names? Because it turns mm-hmm. out marrying them together is a monstrosity and it's disgusting. Yeah. And your kid will hate you. Yeah. Yeah. If your kid's name, if your kid's first name is longer than 10 letters, reconsider. And that's being generous. Yeah. Ooh. My name is Madison. It's got eight letters. Okay. And that's straddle the line. So um, as, as is mine, Courtney is eight letters. And that's Courtney's it. a normal name. Madison yeah. with two D's is not normal. I don't know why my parents did that. Uh, you're, they just wanted to be special. And I know. Now. Embarrassing. <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> Um, yeah, look at them now. Neither of them call... Well, my dad doesn't... My dad calls me Madison sometimes. <laughs> Neither of them call me my name, so... Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. Kids' names should be five letters or less, and I will stick by that. Um, yeah. <laughs> you hear that, Court? That's a safe number. Would you rather go by Court or Knee? Oh. <laughs> well, I... I- I, let me say this. I don't mind being called court, but it feels very, like, masculine to me when people call me that. It makes me feel butch. <laughs> um, you're not? <laughs> I know, but it does. Um, Weird. And not I that I, you were like, this whole time. hate it. Like, there's certain, I guess, like, it depends on your delivery of it, how, how naturally you can say it. Don't ask me if you can call me that. I'm going to say no. What about Erdy? Like, Ernie? Erdy. Erdy? Mm-hmm. Er- Why Erdy? You are. You are. T N E R? N E. Erdy? Erdy. You're you're leaving out the the N. No, I'm saying it. <laughs> I hate that too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, don't, just don't refer to me as anything. Don't speak. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Way to Banter Book Club Podcast. I am Maddie here with Unnamed. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what? Did you see the videos of like the Glasgow uh, Willy Wonka experience? They, okay, no. Look it up after this. The villain there okay. that they AI generated was called The Unknown. So that's how you may refer to me from now on. Okay. The Unknown. Okay. <laughs> All welcome right. to our podcast yes okay well actually bye from our podcast yeah. we're leaving this we're closing this out <laughs> we've been closing out for like five minutes okay um if you liked this episode 
give it a five star rating. Give our podcast a five star rating, please. Um, if you want to know what we're doing, we're not here. Follow us on some of the social medias I mentioned earlier um, at Woody Banter Book Club. And yeah. All right. Well, without further ado, I think the only thing left to say is Happy, Happy Reading. reading. <laughs>